Okay, Ms. Miller, we'll be starting here. We have the attorney for the other side. Ms. Wilburn, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. We've been sitting here. We had another case that we're backed up on, so we've been all ready to go, but you're right on time. Uh, I've already advised the defendant of her rights as a tenant. This is Village Manor versus Molly Miller. The file number is 2217 I can't read my own writing. Ms. Miller is present by Zoom. The manager, Amber Canfield, is also present. This is filed as a termination of tenancy for the defendant's apartment at Laura Court. Uh, the allegations include sanitary issues and a cat and unclean cat conditions with urine and litter box, other issues. So Ms. Miller, they want you to move. Uh, yes. What is your position? They served a notice to quit on you for November 4th, directing that you should move by December 6th, that they would file this action. You didn't move and they filed this action. What's your position? Um, I didn't know about those dates. Um, she had sent me some papers saying about that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so I went to go talk to her and she said that um, eviction is the last option that they don't like to do that, that as long as I was willing to work with her, um, that they just had to send the papers to their like lawyer just for verification or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I tried my best to um, well, work with her. Lives <clears throat> my two daughters. The addendum to the notice to quit says you violated certain paragraphs of the lease. Specifically, you have an unauthorized cat. You have animal urine throughout your home, as well as lack of housekeeping, excessive clutter, other unsanitary conditions throughout the unit. Additionally, you've caused damage to the unit by cat litter being flushed down the toilet, and you've removed all the batteries from the smoke detectors, and you do not have utilities in your name. So there are a number of violations that they're alleging. They're, at this point, they're just allegations, but they want you to move. Well, you didn't move, so they set this hearing. So the law requires that I set a second hearing. Ms. Canfield, has there been any effort in trying to rectify the circumstance here? I have been trying to work with her. However, we recently entered her home um, January 3rd to do bed bug inspections and the home has gotten much worse. She also is not paying rent. <laughs> The law requires that I continue this for seven days. So I'm gonna continue this to February 3rd at 3.15. Um, Ms. Wilburn, does that work for you? That was February 3rd at 10.15? No, 3.15. 3.15. Yes, it does. And will that be by Zoom again? Yes, by Zoom. Okay. Um, Miss Miller, if they get what they ask for, you would have 10 days from February 3rd to move out, which would be February the 13th, or you would be subject to being evicted. If you get evicted from subsidized housing, it can make it very difficult for you to get back into other housing. But now, according to the manager, things have gotten worse since they were in November when they served the notice to quit. Uh, but things could have been fixed by A, removing the cat, B, cleaning the premises. But at this point, I think they're going to move forward with trying to have you move out of the premises. I did advise you of your rights to get some legal advice from legal aid or other entity. But this clock is ticking and we're getting close to midnight. And so um, we will visit this again next Friday at 3.15. Uh, are you available then? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Are you at the school now? Yes. Okay, well, um, that'll be right at the cusp of when the day ends, but 
you've managed to zoom in from there. So we'll address this again next Friday at 315, okay? Okay. All right, I'll see you then. Ms. Welburn, you or someone else, I guess, can be available then. And Absolutely, Judge. All right, thank you. Thank you, have a good weekend. All right, we're ready to address Village Manor versus Molly Miller. The file number is 221788LT. Attorney Jen Wilburn is here again this week on behalf of the plaintiff. Their manager, Amber Canfield, is here, and Molly Miller is here. Uh, this was filed as a termination of tenancy. The plaintiff wanted to have the defendant vacate for a number of reasons, which had to do with sanitation, a cat, and some other things. And then they also indicated bed bugs had been found there. So they're resolute in their request to have Ms. Miller move. Is that correct, Ms. Wilburn? It is, Your Honor. Um, and I believe we are actually going to be able to come to some terms of a conditional dismissal um, whereby Ms. Miller will um, vacate. But if we could go into a breakout room briefly, uh, Ms. Miller, Amber, and myself, and we can uh, finalize the terms of those agreement and get it on the record and then submit it to the court. That would be fine. I'll take up my criminal bench warrant in the meantime and uh, take as much time as you need. Ms. Thank Miller, you. you hit the button that says join. All right, we'll return to the record in the Village Manor versus Molly Miller. Jen Wilburn is here, Amber Canfield is here on behalf of the apartment complex and Molly Miller is here. Parties were in a breakout room. Uh, Ms. Wilburn, what's the status? Your Honor, we have a proposed conditional dismissal. Um, I can read you the terms of that. Um, I don't need to, I don't think I need to go over the full uh, conditional dismissal, but the terms of it are uh, defendant agrees she will vacate on or before April 1st, 2023. Um, she agrees to follow the terms of the lease and the rules and regulations for the duration of her tenancy. She agrees the cat will be removed from the unit on or before February 10th. Uh, she agrees to address the housekeeping, excessive clutter, and unsanitary conditions and to have those remedied and ready for inspection by plaintiff by February 24th. She shall pay past due rent, including February rent, on or before February 10th. And she shall pay March rent timely as it comes due. And acceptance of any of uh, these rental payments will not negate the 30-day notice, plaintiff's right to enforce any term in this conditional dismissal or her agreement to vacate by April 1st. I did go over um, the fact that plaintiff could submit an affidavit of noncompliance if she violates any of these terms, and that at that time, a judgment and order of eviction could issue to remove her. Um, I did go over this with her. I've gotten her contact information to send her a copy, and she did give me her permission to sign this to submit to the court. All right, Ms. Miss, Miss Miller, did you hear everything that Ms. Welburn said? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And you agree to those terms and conditions? Yes, I do, sir. Now, let me read you something I read you last week. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered, that's what we just did. She's going to file this conditional order of dismissal. You will waive the rights listed above, but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days had passed. You could move to set aside the judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord tenant hearing. However, if the judge did not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. So this will show as a dismissal, which won't affect your ability to get into other subsidized housing. Right now, it's very difficult to find a place to move to. Um, have you got anything in mind? Um, <clears throat> I've put in applications places and I also am in the process of being like, pre-approved to see like homeownership if that's in my future at all 
Well, that would be yeah. to get a cat if you want to and clutter your house if you want to, but uh, when you're in an apartment, they won't tolerate that sort of thing. All right, she's going to submit this conditional order of dismissal. I will sign it. It gives you quite a bit more time because if they got what they asked for today, you would have until the 13th of February to move. Here they've given you all the way until April 1st. So it's the rest of February and all of March. So there is some consideration for you as well, but you're agreeing to pay February and March's rent. Do you have any questions? I do not. Ms. Canfield, did you agree on all these conditions as well? I did, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Welburn and everyone, thank you for your hard work. I'll wait for that order and uh, best of luck.